Mm -hmm. Okay, please, uh, Zhishan, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Henry. Like, thanks for the invitation and sorry for the delay again. Like, uh, so today I'm going to talk about our recent work at company. So it's about uh, solving the constraint optimization problem with QoA. And specifically, we want to demonstrate one mechanism inside the QoA, like which is the alignment effect we will talk about later. So, and so this is the problem setup. is a pretty general constraint combinatorial optimization problem. We have an objective function. The design variable are all the Boolean variables. And we have some constraints, uh, which don't by a physical set F. And we have, you can add many constraints into the constraint set. And to deal with this type of constraint problem, uh, clearly we, we need to like find a way to handle the constraint, right? And the first option, which is pretty general and flexible, and which is the soft constraint relaxation. And you basically, the idea is to add constraint violation at the penalty term into the cost function, or you, you say the Lagrangian regular, regularization term. And what's the advantage? This this type of relaxation is super easy to implement and flexible to of your to your algorithm. You can apply this strategy to many optimization tasks, like also beyond the QoA also works for annealing types of optimization. But uh, this type of relaxation do not give you a strong guarantee on the feasibility, even you have a noiseless quantum simulator. Uh, and what's, what's the, the second challenge is that the penalty factor lambda here is super hard to tune. And we have some preliminary like experiments from to, to to talk about how to tune the lambda in another paper. And this is this example is a QA for for assets portfolio optimization problem. And if you can see from the figure, if you change the penalty factor a little bit, the performance is super sensitive. And it means that you, you really need to really tune the lambda pretty carefully to, in order to get a, a satisfying result. Um speaking of the satisfying it means the pretty high performance, like approximate ratio AR, and we also want a high in constraint probability. And beyond that, we one of the good advantages, the QA of the QA is the parameter transfer transferability. Like you see, you can optimize QA parameter for one instance, and you you transfer the, the parameter to another problem instance. But the transferability will be well, we'll fail in, in the relaxation term. Like, uh, for example, here, if you have one optimized parameter, but you change the lambda again, and the, the, the transfer parameter also performed pretty bad. So it means that you, you need to tune the lambda for each instance again carefully. So it tells us the soft constraint relaxation is not that easy to implement in the practical, actually and because the lambda tuning issue. So beyond the soft constraint relaxation strategy, um, we, ha we have another uh, strategy to encode the, the constraint, which is hard, hard constraint encoding. The key idea for the quantum, uh, especially for the quantum sense is that you prepare a feasible initial state and you design the quantum dynamics to enforce the state evolution. To, to enforce the state always lying in the feasible space. And by doing so, it gives you a strong feasibility, feasibility like guarantee, even in the, uh, in, the, in the noiseless circuits, because you, you, you enforce the state always lying in the feasible subspace. But this type of hard, hard constraint encoding requires the domain specific knowledge to for you to design the QoA answers or the quantum, quantum answers. And, and here, so because we are talking about QoA in our work and we will talk about how to encode this, this kind of uh, constraint into the QoA circuit. And the, 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 gen, the, idea, the 
algorithm is called quantum alternating operator answers. Uh, I assume everyone is familiar with the standard Fahi QOA, the quantum approximate, approximate of magician algorithm. And it's pretty similar, actually. So it's just an extension to the original Fahi's QOA. And it gives you the freedom to design the, the phase separator up, up to the first the phase separation operator and the mixing operator. And you again, you still alternating apply these two layers to, to involve your initial state. And you hope your target, your ending state will be close to the target state. And specifically here, because we have the constraint, so you want to start with the initial state, which lie in the feasible, feasible uh, space, and then you keep the involve, involve, involve in the feasible state and and yes, and if you look at a, a for mathematic formulation, it's the same as the standard QOA. And uh, uh, also the parameter here, we need to take take a like classical optimizer to help you do the parameter optimization. And so it's a well known that the QOA. Uh, is, is inspired from the algebraic quantum computing. Uh, what does the AQC mean here? Uh, the, the key idea of, of AQC is that if you have a, a, a ham-dependent Hamiltonian H of T written in this way, and in the beginning it is H of M, and in the uh, final time it will be the H of P. And the key idea of algebraic quantum computing is that if you know a quantum system starts from the eigenstate of initial h, and it will always lie in the corresponding eigenstate of h of t, if h of t varies slowly enough. Uh, so, so in the sense of AQC, it means that if you can involve the Hamiltonian slow enough, you want to prepare your initial state as the ground state of h of m, and then finally, you will end up with the ground state of H of P, which is your interested solution. Um, and it's, it's known that QOA, if a QOA algorithm has a infinite depth and a specific parameter schedule, it will be finally converged to the better quantum computing. Right? And uh, the specific parameter schedule uh, is basically look like this. You have a uh, keep increasing gamma and decreasing beta. And so what does it tell us? So, so suppose we now we have an infinite depth QA for free. Uh, how should we prepare the initial state? And inspired from the algebraic quantum computing, you probably want to prepare the initial state as the ground state of mixing Hamiltonian H of M, and basically you will end up with the H of P ground state. However, uh, in the practical, uh, at least we don't have the in, in, infinite depth QA for free, right? So in the, in the near term or in the like limited budget, you may only have a shallow QA. And in this sense, how to design the initial states and how to how to find how to design the mixing operator is the research question here. And we want to find we want to design the pair of initial state and mixing operator such that firstly you can guarantee the feasibility of your solution means that the feasible state everything is is feasible. And secondly you want to converge the ground ground true solution fast. So this is the research question here. And the key contribution of our work is that uh, we, we call it the Lyman effect. So basically it says that even in a small QA depth, the alignment between initial state and ground state of mixing Hamiltonian still improves the QA performance. It says that uh, even though we don't have the infinite depths, you still want to prepare the initial state as ground state of H of M. So this is the key message here. And if you, if they are, if, if initial state is the ground state of H of M, we call it aligned 
and otherwise it's misaligned. And you see from the sketch figure, if they are aligned, pro clearly the approximate ratio is much higher. Okay, so how to, so we evaluate, we demonstrate this alignment effect by a comprehensive numerical experiments. And our case study is the possible optimization problem. And the formulation is the standard uh, mean variance one. And basically it's a quadratic problem, quadratic programming. And you can, you can treat it as the max card with weighted max card with a fully connected graph or it's a SK model. And, but, but we have a additional mean term to bias the diagonal Hamiltonian. And specifically the, the portfolio optimization in practical actually have many, many constraints. Uh, you have constraint on the, uh, on maximum budget on the, number of assets you can choose and a lot of constraints. And first, and and what's more, why why we care about the portfolio optimization in the bank by, by using quantum algorithm because the we care about speed of solving the problem because this type of large scale uh large scale combinatorial optimization will be solved like uh, many many times in in, uh, in the bank so we care about the speed of solving the problem we care about visibility and that's motivates the bank to study this type of problem okay. Okay. and so but for now we we uh we simplify the problem a lot so we only consider a humming weight constraint and we treat it as the budget constraints means that you on, you can only buy a certain number of assets and you assume each asset have the same price. So you have your budget uh, limitation is K means that you, you can only buy K, K assets. And the humming weight constraints uh, is very easy to understand. So this is a simple example. If you have N equals to four and K equals three, you means that all the feasible bit string for you is this four. Okay. Uh, and question about the problem set up here. I see a bit before it interact. So I see a I see a question. Is there a performance guarantee? Using QA for command factor assess allocation. Um, let's see. Okay. Like sense for the question, uh, Jin. So I I don't. We don't have a strong theoretical guarantee at, at this moment, but um, we we only have numerical experiments. I think so. Like for the max card, we have the theoretical guarantee on the <clears throat> on the AR all the time. But for for the uh, more complicated cases, we don't have that theoretical result yet. Okay, so I I think we can continue. <clears throat> so here comes the how to encode the humming weight constraint, and basically we we want to design the mix operator by XY models as a Heisenberg XY model. The Hamiltonian is written defined in this way is the a bunch of xx plus yy, and uh, graphically you can see a xy model as a two D graph, and each node is the one uh, one qubit or one spin, and if you if two nodes are connected, the edge means the interaction between these two spins. And so if you define the, the, the set S as a fully connected, so the, the mixer will be the complete XY mixer. And if you, uh, if you look, <coughs> look at connectivity, so basically it's a, a complete graph. And it, the, the name tells you like, so, so for a ring, so the connectivity is a, a 1D connection with a boundary condition. So 
and the, the some XY mixer ring XY mixer will look like a ring actually. So, but uh, just to explain like why this type of XY mixer can help you like enforce the humming weight constraint, and it basically is it's very easy. It's just a matrix multi matrix vector multiplication. So because the if you look at the matrix form of x y term is it will rotate the it is acts like adding a rotation angle between the zero one and one zero so if you write down the matrix multiplication you have a state uh on the left hand side and you, you apply the x y term interacting with the first first two spin it will be like the end, the ending state will be like right hand side. So, so previously is zero is zero one, and it comes zero one plus one zero, and that's and you, this is one x y term. If you apply multiply the uh, multiple x y term, is basically acts the same way. So you can always uh, preserve the humming weight if as long as your initial state is uh feasible humming has the constant humming weight. And so, and in the last page, we show two very common example of the XY model. One is the ring, one is the mixer, or uh, one is the ring, one is the complete graph. Um, but actually you have much freedom to design XY models because as we said, uh, each XY term can preserve the humming weight. So you can basically, if you have a 2D graph here, you can choose whatever edge you want. You can always preserve the humming weight in terms of the uh, constraint preserving. Uh, we have a simple strategy here. For example, if you have a six qubit problem, the 2D graph looks like this. You can probably want design XY models by by decompose the the graph to to several chains. And for example, the six six qubit graph can be composed by three trains. And uh, here we have three. If you multiply these three trains together, it will be the complete graph. And you can build the XY model by choosing one chain or building build it with two trains. And of, of course, you have other diff many different decomposition choices. So we have so you say in this page we show many examples of the XY models, and in this will uh, help us. So in in the future numerical experiment we will investigate how to choose the XY models and demonstrate the alignment effect in variant conditions. Um. Okay. And this this page is another visualization of the why X Y model can help you preserve humming weight. <laughs> so this figure is transition matrices. So it's the unitary of e to the power of h of m. And we keep the we keep we keep the available paths in the in the matrix only. It means that if the element has has positive value. We have is is yellow. Otherwise, it's zero. And and from this transition matrices is pretty clear. Like, uh, for each, it look behaves like a Markov chain. So every state can can be only like chain, uh, can can only travel to another state in the yellow, uh, in the yellow yellow square. Like one extreme con. Example is that if you have a the the first like I can tell you let me pointer I thought I need, never mind so if you start from the the the, the zero zero element it means this your your state is zero 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 one and you you can so oh sorry if you the, the first is a uh, Zero is all, all zero of this string, and the humming weight is zero. You have no choices to move to other state, so you can only 
lying in yourself. So it's a diagonal one only in the first row and the first column. And the same applies for other uh, B strings. And so, so, but this only tells you the transition matrices. Uh, by choosing different XY models, the transition probability will be different. And so to, to design the XY model and to optimize this corresponding beta parameter, this means that we want to find the proper pro transition probability for each transition pass and to involve your state to the target state. Okay. Yes, and so far we have all the ingredients for our experiment. So we will, we will see, we will, we will use the XY models to design mixer to help you, uh, encode the humming wave constraint. And we design a, a different set of experiment to demonstrate the alignment effect. The first one is that we set mixer as the exact XY model and prepare the initial state as ground state of the corresponding XY model. So we expect that for both the low depth and high depth QOA, uh, aligned, al aligned ansatz will achieve better performance than a misaligned one, right? But uh, this is a side, side note, side information. So if you want to demonstrate a high depth QOA uh, optimization, uh, it's actually pretty hard. If your P equals to 100, it means you have 200 parameters to optimize. In by by, if you don't have a good strategy, it's it's impossible in the, in the to to optimize 200 parameters directly by a by a SciPy optimizer. So so basically here, uh, we utilize the knowledge inspired from the algebraic uh, computing. So we assume that the uh, gamma and beta they have the reparameterization schedule of gamma and beta. And because the Aldax theorem tells you the, the gamma should go up and beta should go down uh, along with the QA depths, we force the linear schedule of gamma and beta evolution. And, but we optimize the delta, which is constant here, the height of the initial beta. And, and we we transfer the 2p dimension optimization problem to only 1d we only optimize the the height of initial beta and once you determine the beta uh sorry once you determine the delta here we will know how the uh, schedule of beta and how schedule of gamma goes so this strategy helps us to validate the qa performance in a high depth and yes. And so first experiment with the exact XY mixers, and we prepare the initial state as the ground state of the exact Hamiltonian. Uh, we have a set of uh, choices here. We study the ring and ring XY and the complete XY initially. And if you look at the legend, the, the the pair the so complete complete means the mixer is complete x y and the initial state is the corresponding ground state of the complete x y Hamiltonian and from the bar plot here you will see that the complete complete always achieves the highest approximate ratio and the second one is the ring ring so all the line structure have the best performer have the, the the bad performance here and beyond that we, we want to uh, highlight that this this type of improvement is exempt from the warm start because uh in QOA there are, there are another bunch of uh researchers that are talking about how to use warm start to to help you evolve the solution but we we want to like say that the, the alignment effects not it's not coming from a warm star because you have the ring rings 
Battleland Complete Ring. And complete complete is better than ring complete. It's a, so there's no good warm star initial here. It's not always one initial it achieves a better solution. So and from this plot, it's is it's very, very clear. If you have a lined structure, you have a better performance. But we want to study uh you know uh, more comprehensively, like uh so this page, we, we studied different XY models. Basically, we if you look at previous the 2D graph, and instead of using the uh, complete graph or ring graph, you decompose it by, by chains and construct the XY model, the uh, construct mixer by using one chain or two chains. So two chains means uh, chain one plus chain two chain. Like if you look at the, the X label, is one two means the chain one plus chain two. And the di diagonal one in the heat map here are, are all the line of NSAS. And again, so if you look at all the all heat map, the the diagonal one is much better. It means that again the align structure gives you a better performance. And specifically, we look at a uh, uh, different depths. The OLS, the optimized linear schedule, which is a uh, p equals one hundred. The left hand side is p equals two. And although the value doesn't match, the, the different they have different comp uh, AR performance, but the the observation is consistent. Like no matter in low depths p equals two or in high depths p equals to one hundred, the diagonal line is always the best. Says the uh the the line structure is always performing the best. Okay. So far so good. Okay. So so we finished the idea setup. We say it idea because we assume you can implement the mixer exactly and prepare the initial state uh exactly. But, but in the practical uh, many XY model you cannot implement it exactly in your quantum circuit uh, because we you, you need to approximate the uh, XY Hamiltonian by the one 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 two qubit gates, right? And and so in the second set of experiments, uh, we use the approximate XY model, but we still prepare the initial state as the ground state of the exact model. Uh, we will we'll explain why. But the motivation here is that we want to study a more practical setup, which you have to approximate your mixer. So similarly, we start from the ring and complete. So if you have a 1D XY model, uh, you, you want to approximate the XY mix, ring XY mixer. The common strategy strategy is the chotterization, right? And for this type of uh one D X Y model, there is a clever way to to do the chotterization. Uh, basically, it's decompose like partition the the index into the old one and the even one. We, we call it a part parity partition, and in the uh, right hand side, you, you basically you can see that by partitioning the by partitioning into two groups, uh, in each group our x x y model will be will commute with will commute with each other. So in that sense, you can you you doesn't you doesn't lose the uh, accuracy in 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 doing the within each group, and so many. So ideally, this, this is the one of the good strategies to help you do the chotterization because in terms of chotterization accuracy, and you repeat the, the chotterization for, for chotter step t times. And specifically, you don't want to, because you know x, y model is x, x plus y, y, uh, you don't want to break, break the x, x plus y, y. So each block here is one x, x plus y, y means that you don't want shorter, shorter the xx, shorter 
Why? Why? Because in that case, you will break the in that in that quarterization, you you don't have constraint preservability. So, but as long as you you throttle, you keep the XX plus YY stru uh, structure, no matter how you throttleize them, uh, you can always preserve the humming weight. So this, this is a very simple math. You can check it yourself. And beyond one D X Y model, so if you have two D X Y model, uh. Our, we we offer one strategy here to help you charterize the 2D 2D model, and we basically decompose the 2D graph into a, a summation of 1D chains and approximate the 1D chains with the above parity partition. So, yes. So so here we the k means that the equation the k in the equation above equation means you decompose the graph into two into k chains. And for within one chain, you rep reply, repeat the above one D characterization again. So yeah, so this page uh, is how we do the characterization towards the X Y mixers, and we will answer the question. If you have the mixing operator which is approximate X Y, why you still want to prepare initial state as the Exact x y. Why don't you just prepare the initial state as the ground state of approximate x y? And the answer is that we don't have the for for, for the approximate x y. You actually don't have the fixed ground state actually. Uh, uh because you you use the we use the trotterization to implement the mixer, and it's a time dependent unit right now because the beta parameter is, is, is about to optimize. And so you, if you have a U of beta, of course the ground state of U of beta is, will be depend on, will be depends on beta. And in that sense, you don't have a good way to, to, pro, to prepare the initial state, right? Because it's the beta dependent and beta is going to be updated. And what's more? Yeah, you, oh, sure, sure. Yes. Sorry. Please. Um, if your system size is very large, uh, how would you prepare the initial state of the, uh, the exact mixer? Uh, yes. A good question. Good question. Because so you, you said uh, that you prepare it by calculating the eigenvalue, right? And if your right. mixer is very, the qubit number of qubits is very large. Right. Right. The, right. 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 Good question. Yes. Good point. We 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 cannot pre prepare the initial state of a very large. A uh, very large system. So this is only for demonstration only, and we want to study the the mechanism of a low depth QoA. We also have a so we we want demonstrating a in the classical computer with a reasonable size to study the mechanism. We don't talk about the implementation yet. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Right. And again, so the first reason here, the ground state will be time dependent and uh, a war mix as we, we we cannot prepare initial state like of a approximate mixer. So we fix the fix it as the ground state of the exact mixer, but we try to approximate the uh, x y as close to, uh, as possible to the exact one. In that sense, if you're Ground state converge to the exact one. The alignment still happens. Right? Oh, and there is a second reason here. Even if you fix the beta, the ordering of eigenvalue will be intractable because the if you do a, the eigenvalue decomposition of the of a of a unitary and the eigenvalue be complex value, and it's wrapping around the unit ball. Basically, you don't know which one is the minimum eigenvalue because it's a complex number. And it, it will be like shifted by a periodic 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 periodicity there. So you don't you don't actually it's not that easy to have to check the minimum ground state there. So okay. so 
sorry. So, uh, yeah, so we fixed the initial state as the ground state of uh, exact XY, and we'll try to approximate the XY models. And uh, the figure here, the X axis is the total step. So the higher the, the higher total step, the more accurate your approximate XY is. So that's oh, so that's the trend here. That's for for a complete XY model, a more total step means the higher approximate accuracy, and the ground state of the approximate XY will converge to the exact XY, and you have the alignment, and you uh, you have the better performance. And yes, if you look at the the left two figures, uh, with the increase of X, the AI is or going up monotonically, right? Uh, but for the, it doesn't happen for the ring mixer, and it is the observation. Like, uh, so it says that for a ring mixer, if you have a more accurate X Y model, X, more accurate X Y uh mixer, your AI is not monotonically increasing, not necessarily. But we argue that. This, this, if you look at the y, like, so the range of y, y axis, um, we can see that under the rim mixer, the QA performance is much more robust. And so it, it doesn't increase monotonically, but it, it's very robust. Uh, and also, at least we can see that in the first few shorter steps, uh, you have a increasing ac approximation accuracy and your performance is still increasing right and we 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 also wonder why it is different for the ring mixer so we we studied the different uh xy models to to see that it happen as well so this is the the result if you have a xy model constructed by two chains uh, which was we we treated as a little bit complicated structure, and you observe monotonic increasing performance. But as long as your X Y model is simple as the one D, like you constructed by one chain or, or or one ring, the monotonic increasing is not is not like guaranteed, and uh, it's not. Monotonic guarantees and the performance is also robust in terms of one D. So, so the 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 our argument here is that as long as your X Y model, as long as your mixer has a complicated structure, a uh, more accurate implementation means a better alignment means the better performance. But if your XY model is relatively simple, like 1D XY, uh, you don't observe the monotonic increase in performance, but everything is robust here. It's clear. Okay, so. Okay. And yep, yeah, so this and finalize the practical experiment setup. And finally, we'll jump to the hardware one. So any questions so far? Let's see the time. Okay, we have still have 10 minutes. Okay, okay finally, we, we came to the hardware experiment and it's recall the question from, from last audience. It's a very good question. We cannot do the experiments above in the hardware actually. Uh, many, many reasons. Like the first one is that Prepare the initial state is uh, itself is a tricky problem. You don't know the ground state of ring x y. Uh, you you know the eigenvalue eigen eigenvector, but you don't know how to implement it by quantum circuits. Uh, at least you don't know how to implement it efficiently. So, the only ground states you know a uh, efficient circuit implementation is the ground state of complete x y, and it's 
so, uh, the, the ground state is uh, called dark state or dick state, which is a uniform superposition of all feasible states with a certain humming weight. And we we know the circuit realization of dark state. So it's, it informs us to prepare the state, the uh, initial state as dark state, right? And if you want to study the alignment effects, so if you have a dark state, means that you want to prepare the uh, we want to make the mixer as the complete x y, but uh, if you look at the table, the the, the gate implementation of complete x y is much worse than the ring x y. Basically, it's a uh, is ten times two qubit gates here, and n means the number of uh qubits. So if you in our experiment, we we have n equals to thirty two, and uh, the shorter to to in step to implement shorter step one uh, x y model, it significantly increased the uh, two qubit gates, and we are it's not affordable. So we still use the ring x y as the shorter step uh, as the mixer, but we use the complete or we use the dark state, and you may wonder so how how does it mean the alignment here, right? So. By preparing the dark state plus shorterized the ring mixer, we demonstrate alignment by by calculating the ground state fidelity here. Um, yeah, so basically, is we use some numerical uh, tricks to to determine the the ground state of a shorterized ring act mixer, uh, and you you calculate overlap between the dark state and the 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 ground state and we call it GS fidelity. And if you have a higher shorter step, you will have a shorter, a better uh GS fidelity. And we so by by using this quantity, we say that a higher shorter step means still means a better alignment. Even though they are they, they are not perfectly matched here. And the performance the noise that performance still tells you that if you have a high depth shorter step you can achieve higher approximate ratio uh, even in a very high like number of qubits here uh, we maximum we reach the 32 it is really high already uh, but you look at the, the y-axis so the value they are actually very close so what's the like what what how do you think about this? So so if it's noiseless, you can achieve such limited improvement. So we we assume that if you have the hardware noise, the, this kind of improvement is not guaranteed at all, and you you can observe anything probably. <laughs> so our argument is that the hardware noise will eliminate this type of uh, alignment effect. And this is the hardware result. We run 32 SS portfolio organization on the continuous at two device. And in terms because of the budget limitation, we and the, the circuit depth limitation, we only play with the shorter step one, shorter step two, uh on on with, with dike state plus the, the ring mixer. And the, if you look at box plot. They are basically undistinguishable, so you cannot tell which one is better. And even and what's more, the, if you look at the mean, the charger one is actually slightly better than charger two. Um, but so it says that under the hardware noise, uh, the alignment effect doesn't hold by so far. So, and but it seems. Uh, but we, but it's, it can also give you some positive results on the uh, on current hardware. Like all of them are much better than a random guess. So the the black dot lines, the random guess, which is the dark state, the AR from a dark state, and it says that uh, with the quantum optimize quantum computer is still optimizing something, but the current hardware noise will. Like break down the alignment effect so far. So, uh, 
the practical message here is that if you run the QOA on a, a, pre, a commonly preserved QOA on, on your point of hardware, you, you don't care about the alignment effect at all. You you can you just play with the the the, the simplest mixer, X Y ring mixer, and of course you can only prepare the the initial state as the deck state, or or you you have other choices of initial state. Um, yes. So this is the message from hardware experiment. Okay. And okay, I think yeah. That's so far all the key message from our paper, but we still have some side knowledge, side message here. And so, so in this this page, so so in this whole project, actually the the most challenging part is coming from parameter optimization, especially for the portfolio of my optimization is a highly weighted problem. And if you, you if you don't pay pay enough attention to your optimizer. And you randomly choose a, a optimizer and set a search range or set a random initial. Very likely you can you cannot op optimize it. So why? Because, um, so if you plot the heat map here, the gamma and beta over a certain range, if you set a, for example the common common range probably is zero to two pi for 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 gamma, right? If so, you will observe the the rightmost figure. It's basically a, a flattened best solution, flattened uniformly best solution. You can never opt, optimize it within this landscape. But if you do the search among the zero to one hundred pi, is the middle one. It gives you a high chance to optimize it. So it means that we, we we do want to optimize over one zero to one hundred pi, and this is equivalent to 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 a scaling factor to your cost function. So, in our in this whole numerical experiment, we we use the very we, we manually tune the very scaling factor by plotting the heat map and say, oh, we want to optimize over this landscape. And in, because our goal here is to demonstrate the, the the mechanism, we don't care about. We only want to optimize. The optimal solution, optimal parameter, and so, so in the middle, the 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 landscape is a is a optimizer friendly one. So basically, it should have similar order of magnitude in gamma and beta and and their gradients. So if so, your optimizer is easy to optimize. Uh, landscape is a friendly to an optimizer. Um, but of course, I know the if you want if you need to manually tune the rescaling factor, it's pretty hard and it's kind of cheating here. But so this is our another work from our team. So Ruslan presented like two weeks ago. So it talks about how to choose the rescaling factor by using an analytic rule. And again, by surprisingly for a weighted problem. You just need to multiply your cost function by a constant, and if you do the optimization over a cost function, rescale the cost function by a constant, it doesn't change anything, right? It doesn't change the optimal solution. But doing so, you will have a much easier problem to optimize and look at the the number of iteration. By a rescaled problem, you you need a much less iteration to achieve a a satisfying result. So be, be, be free to check out this paper or look look back to the previous uh, presentation in in the lecture series. Yes. Okay. And yeah. So take home message here. Uh, in general, a constraint combinatorial optimization. Uh, if if so, we want to do the hard constraint coding if possible because the so the lambda tuning in the soft constraint relaxation method. And we introduced different XY models to encoding the humming weight constraints. And the key message here, or oh, and key message in the paper, is the align the structure, align initial state and mixer will improve the QA performance, even in a low depth QA. We demonstrated the alignment effect in different experiment, experiment setup. And but in the near term hardware, 
noise can impact the alignment improvement. And this work also strengths the connection between the QoA and the algebraic quantum computing. And so far, all the experiments are numerical ones. But recently, we also have some intuition how to demonstrate alignment effect from a theoretical uh, perspective. And that's looking forward to the future work. Like, okay, and that's the last page. Okay, 